So what makes me cranky about Triple X, the return of Xander Cage? Well, other than the obvious point about resurrecting a franchise over a decade after its original unnecessary garbage sequel came out, I'm gonna go with really obvious stuntmen. Look, if you're gonna do a movie that's based around adding ludicrous over-the-top extreme sports stunts to a James Bond premise, it's probably not a good idea to make your lead an aging Vin Diesel who is both too old and too valuable a property to ensure for him to be careening down a jungle hill on skis or doing skateboard tricks in the middle of traffic because it inevitably means that you're going to have to ruin your action sequences trying desperately to hide the fact that it's a stuntman doing all the actual work. But if, for some reason, you decide that's the way you want to go, you should at least get a stuntman who looks enough like Vin Diesel that the audience isn't going to wonder why Triple X loses 60 pounds of muscle every time he goes to do something dangerous. Triple X 3, or should that be 9X, or maybe uh, X cubed? I, I don't know. Anyway... Whatever you call it, this movie pulls out every trick in the book, from rapid disorienting cuts and shaky cam, to outright taking things out of focus to try and keep you from noticing that the guy on the skateboard appears to be wearing a bald cap all of a sudden. And when things get too absurd for even the stuntmen to pull off, it just switches to a CGI green screen combo that at points looks as obvious as it used to back in the late 80s. This is unfortunate because the movie does have some relatively interesting action set pieces, which are pretty thoroughly wasted thanks to all the stuff they're doing to get around having a bunch of actors who simply don't have the durability or flexibility to pull off the stunts in question. Uh, the only people who really get any clear shots of them doing stuff are Tony Ja and Donnie Yen, but that's because they're martial arts stars in their own right, so they can actually kick some ass when it's called for. Presumably, the ass-kicking is why we go to these kinds of movies in the first place, so having a sizable chunk of it mucked up by all this stuff is a pretty big problem to have particularly when you're a sequel to a sequel nobody wanted to a movie that was such a send-up of over-the-top spy flicks that it was practically a parody in the first place. Because God knows we're not going for the acting, which in this movie is basically the epitome of phoning it in. Vin Diesel's so uninvested in all this stuff that he can barely keep a straight face. He's just straight up smiling through all of his dialogue. And based on the way some of the scenes are shot... I don't even think he was in the same room as the rest of the actors for most of this. There's a whole sequence where they introduce Nina Dobrev's character, who is uh, actually a pretty funny tech geek type, but um, I swear they must have shot each actor individually saying their lines with shoulder stand-ins for anyone else who's supposed to be in the room. On the other side of the spectrum, there's Tony Collette, who takes over the Sam Jackson role after he's done collecting his paycheck, and as far as I can tell, the direction she was given was... Pretend your face has been shot so full of Botox, you are literally incapable of moving any part of it. Show me that. The rest of the very large cast is pretty forgettable, because there's just too many of them for anybody to get much individual attention in one movie. They're actually treated more like they're being reintroduced from previous entries in the franchise, which as far as I can tell, none of them are, except for the obligatory Ice Cube cameo. Had these actually been returning characters in the conclusion to a three-movie story arc, this probably would have worked out really well, because the team does have some chemistry, and it does have some fun quirks to them. In fact, if you take out Vin Diesel winking at the camera and the associated cameos, you might even have enough time to make a pretty good standalone action flick, too. And I suspect that this actually was a completely different movie that the studio slapped the XXX brand into to try and give it a boost with audiences unfamiliar with guys like Donnie Yen. Because there's a lot to this movie that feels like an executive trying to check boxes with different demographics. Okay, Vin Diesel for the Americans, check. Popular Asian martial artists for them, check. Hot ass-kicking females for the feminists, check. Slow pan of sexy woman in a bikini for the boys ages 14 to 21, check. Attractive geek girl for the nerds, check. Soccer star for the Latin and European markets, check. Yet another unnecessary entry in a franchise that wasn't ever really going to be a franchise in the first place, check. That's basically what it comes down to anyway. Nobody wanted this movie, nobody needed this movie, and it's simply not good enough for either of those things to change. So you can safely wait until this one is free to watch and you won't have missed anything, though it may help you kill a couple of hours with some harmless action schlock when you finally do get around to it. So that's what I thought of Triple X, Return of Xander Cage. If for some reason you were lured out to see it this weekend, let me know if you liked it in the comments below. And I may not be able to entertain you by risking my body surfing a 20-foot swell with a dirt bike with skis on it, but I do risk my mental health going to see these movies, so hopefully that'll be entertaining enough for you to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more in the future.